You know how sometimes one little thing can change everything? Well, that's exactly what happened to me, Alice, just two weeks before my engagement party. I'm 27, and I was over the moon about marrying Tom, my boyfriend of three years. We'd been planning this shindig for months, and everything was falling into place. Then, bam, my mom called. Alice, cancel the engagement party, she barked into the phone. I nearly dropped my cell. What? Mom, are you kidding me? No jokes here. Emily just got promoted, and we're celebrating on your engagement day. Emily's my little sister, three years younger, and always been mom and dad's golden girl. But this? This was a whole new level of crazy. Mom, come on. I've been planning this for ages. I'm not canceling because Emily got a pat on the back at work, I said, trying not to lose it. Don't be selfish, Alice. This is big for your sister. Same guests, different party. Just reschedule. I felt my blood boiling. No way, mom. This is my engagement we're talking about. I'm not canceling. End of story. She started screeching then, her voice so high it made me wince. I didn't even bother listening. I just hung up. Sitting there, staring at my phone, all these childhood memories came flooding back. It was always like this, Emily first, me, whenever. I remembered my sweet 16. Mom and Dad totally forgot until Grandma called to wish me happy birthday. They scrambled to throw together some lame celebration, a grocery store cake and a gift card. Talk about pathetic, especially compared to the three-day bash they'd thrown for Emily's 13th just a few months earlier. That's when Tom walked in. One look at my face and he knew something was up. Alice, what's wrong, he asked, plopping down next to me. I spilled everything, the call, mom's demands, the memories. He listened, his face getting darker with every word. That's bull, he said when I finished. We're not cancelling anything. I nodded, so grateful for his support. I know. It's just, why can't they ever put me first? Just once. Because they're idiots, Tom said firmly. But I put you first. Always. I looked up at him, managing a small smile. I know. That's why I'm marrying you, dummy. We spent the rest of the night going over our plans, making sure everything was perfect. As I drifted off to sleep, I tried to push thoughts of my family out of my head. This was my time, my moment. I wasn't going to let them mess it up. The next morning, I woke up determined to forget about mom's crazy call and focus on the party. I had a million things to do, invites to send, decorations to sort out, you name it. Then my phone pinged. It was my cousin Rachel. Hey Alice, everything okay with you and Tom? Heard you guys split up. I stared at my phone, totally confused. Where'd she get that idea? I typed back quick. What? No way. We're fine. Who told you that? Rachel's reply popped up. Weird. Aunt Linda said your mom told her the engagement was off. My stomach dropped like a stone. I called Rachel right away. What's going on? I asked as soon as she picked up. I don't know, Alice. Aunt Linda called last night. Said your mom told her you and Tom had this huge fight and called everything off. She said we should all go to Emily's promotion party instead. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. Rachel, that's all lies. We're still engaged, the party's still on. Mom wanted me to cancel for Emily's thing, but I said no way. There was a pause. Oh, crap. Alice, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. I spent the next hour on the phone with Rachel, piecing together what happened. Turns out, my mom had gone behind my back to cancel my engagement party. She'd called every single relative on the guest list, spinning this wild story about Tom and me breaking up, and redirected them all to Emily's promotion party. I took a deep breath, trying to calm down. I'm gonna fix this mess. Can you help spread the word that the engagement's still on? Of course, Rachel replied without missing a beat. I'll start calling people right now. 
After hanging up, I just sat on my couch, trying to wrap my head around it all. My own mother had tried to sabotage my engagement party. It was almost too crazy to believe. Tom found me there an hour later, when he got home from work. One look at my face, and he knew something was up. I told him everything, mom's calls, the lies, the whole Emily party redirect. With each word, I could see the anger building in his eyes. That's it, he said when I finished. We're cutting them off. All of them. Your parents, Emily, the whole bunch. I knew he was right, but the thought of cutting off my family scared me. Who would I be without them? Even if they treated me like dirt, they were still my family. Let's focus on fixing this first, I said. We need to let everyone know the engagement's still on. Tom nodded, his jaw set. Okay, where do we start? We spent the rest of the night in damage control mode, sending emails, making calls, posting on social media. I wrote this long message explaining everything and sent it to everyone on our guest list. It was exhausting and humiliating, having to explain over and over that no, Tom and I hadn't broken up, and yes, the engagement party was still happening. By the time we finished, it was way past midnight. My voice was shot from all the talking, and my eyes burned from staring at screens. We did it, Tom said, pulling me into a hug. It's gonna be okay. I wanted to believe him, but I couldn't shake the feeling that this was just the beginning. Mom's betrayal had opened up old wounds. All the times I'd been overlooked, all the times Emily had been the favorite, it all came rushing back. The next day, I decided to visit Aunt Marge. She's dad's sister and has always been pretty nice to me. I figured I'd invite her to the engagement party in person and clear up any confusion. When I got to her place, I heard voices coming from the living room. I was about to shout hello when I caught a snippet of conversation that made me freeze. Can't believe Alice would do such a thing, Aunt Marge was saying. Canceling her own engagement party, to spite her sister. So childish. My heart sank. It was a new lie from my family, voiced in order to interrupt the previous fake. I was about to storm in and set things straight when another voice chimed in. I know, right? Poor Emily must be crushed. After all that hard work to get promoted, and now Alice is trying to steal her thunder. I recognized that voice, it was my cousin Sarah. I always thought we were close, but there she was, gossiping about me behind my back. I couldn't take it anymore. I stepped into the room. Is that what you really think of me? Both women jumped like they'd seen a ghost. Aunt Marge recovered first, plastering on a fake smile. Alice, sweetie, we didn't hear you come in. Obviously, I said, my voice ice cold. I came to invite you to my engagement party, but seems like you've already made up your minds about me. Sarah at least had the decency to look ashamed. Alice, we didn't mean. Save it, I cut her off. I want to know exactly what mom told you. For the next hour, I listened as they spilled the beans on mom's tall tale. According to her, I threw a fit when I heard about Emily's promotion, demanding she reschedule her celebration. When Emily said no, I supposedly cancelled my own engagement party out of spite, saying I'd rather not get married at all than share the spotlight. It was something new, a new lie from my family. By the time they finished, I was shaking with anger. None of that is true, I said, my voice trembling. Mom called me and demanded I cancel my engagement party for Emily's celebration. I said no, and now she's spreading lies to sabotage me. I told them everything, the forgotten birthdays, the constant comparisons, years of feeling like I was never good enough. By the time I finished, both women were in tears. Oh, Alice, Aunt Marge said, reaching for my hand. We had no idea. We should have known better than to believe such crazy stories. I took a deep breath, trying to calm down. Look, I appreciate the apology. But right now, I need your help. The engagement party is still on, and I need you to spread the word. Can you do that? They both nodded eagerly, looking relieved to have a chance to make things right. As I left Aunt Marge's house, I felt all mixed up, angry at Mom's betrayal, 
hurt that my family so easily believed the worst about me, but also a tiny bit hopeful. At least some of the truth was out now. The big day arrived, and boy, was I a bundle of nerves as Tom and I walked up to the hall. I held my breath as we pushed open the doors, bracing myself for whatever mess we might find inside. Holy cow! I couldn't believe my eyes. The place was buzzing with people. Smiling faces turned to greet us, and this warm, fuzzy feeling washed over me. The room was packed with relatives, not just the ones we'd managed to reach yesterday, but faces I hadn't seen in ages. I can't believe you all came, I said, my voice all choked up. Uncle Joe, Dad's brother, came up and gave Tom a hearty slap on the back. Of course we came. Did you really think we'd miss this? Though I gotta say, those rumors about your cancelled engagement sure spread like wildfire. Looks like they backfired big time. I laughed, feeling lighter than I had in weeks. Guess they did. As Tom and I made our way through the crowd, soaking up all the congrats and well wishes, I couldn't help but notice Mom, Dad, and Emily were nowhere to be seen. No texts, no emails, not even a grudging, congrats. But surprisingly, their absence felt more like a relief than a letdown. Instead, I found myself gravitating towards Tom's parents, who were beaming at us with genuine pride and love. His mom hugged me tight, whispering, We're so proud of you, Alice. You're already part of our family. The party was in full swing when suddenly, there was a commotion near the dance floor. I couldn't believe my eyes, there was my 80-year-old grandma in the middle, showing off what she called an incendiary dance of her youth. Come on, you young uns, she called out, eyes twinkling mischievously. Let me show you how we used to cut a rug back in my day. The crowd went wild as grandma twirled and swayed, moving surprisingly well for her age. Soon, others joined in, and the dance floor turned into this amazing multi-generational dance-off. As I mingled with the guests, I couldn't help but overhear bits of gossip about all the family drama leading up to today. Can you believe what Alice's mother tried to pull? I heard cousin Sarah say to another relative. Trying to cancel her own daughter's engagement party for her other daughter's work thing? It's nuts. I know, the other voice replied. Poor Alice has always gotten the short end of the stick in that family. I'm glad she's finally standing up for herself. Instead of feeling embarrassed or upset by these chats, I felt, validated. For once, my relatives were seeing the truth about my family dynamics, and they were on my side. As the night went on, I found myself feeling truly happy and celebrated, maybe for the first time ever. The absence of my immediate family, which I'd been so worried about, instead felt like this huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders. The day after our kick-ass engagement party, Tom and I were chilling on the couch, reliving the awesome moments from last night when my phone rang. My stomach did a flip when I saw it was mom calling. Against my better judgment, I answered. Hello? You ungrateful, nasty girl. Mom's voice screeched through the speaker. How dare you? I held the phone away from my ear, her angry rant clear even at arm's length. Tom looked at me, worried, but I shook my head, signaling I'd handle it. Mom, what? Don't you mom me, she cut me off. You've humiliated your sister. Only three people showed up to her party. Three. And they were just those nosy old aunts who'd show up to the opening of an envelope. I took a deep breath, trying to keep my cool. I'm sorry you're disappointed, but... Disappointed? Emily is crushed. She cried all night. This was supposed to be her moment, and you ruined it with your selfishness. I felt my patience wearing thin. Mom, I've been planning my engagement party for months. Emily's promotion party was a last-minute thing, and she knew it clashed with my engagement. That's no excuse. Family comes first, Alice. But clearly, you wouldn't know anything about that. Before I could respond, she hung up on me. Immediately after the call, my phone buzzed with a text. It was from Emily, hope you're happy. You've ruined everything. I'll make you pay for this humiliation. I showed the message to Tom, who frowned. She can't be serious. 
The next two weeks were quiet, and I started to think maybe the storm had blown over. But then, one afternoon, there was a surprise knock at our door. I opened it to find Tom's parents standing there, looking worried. Mr. and Mrs. Thompson, what a surprise. Is everything okay? They exchanged a glance before Mrs. Thompson spoke. Alice, dear, can we come in? We need to talk to you about something. My heart sank as I showed them to the living room. Once we were all seated, Mr. Thompson cleared his throat. Alice, we've, well, we've heard some troubling rumors. There's been talk, talk that you've been cheating on Tom. I felt like I'd been slapped. What? That's ridiculous. I would never. We know, dear, Mrs. Thompson interrupted gently. We've known you for years. We don't believe it for a second. Relief washed over me, quickly followed by anger as I realized where these rumors probably came from. It's my sister, I said, my voice shaking a bit. She threatened to get back at me for ruining her promotion party. She must be spreading these lies. Mr. Thompson nodded grimly. We figured as much. We wanted to come to you directly rather than let these rumors spread. As they left, promising to help squash any rumors they heard, I felt all mixed up inside. I was touched by the Thompsons' support and trust in me, but I was also furious at Emily. How could she stoop so low? A few days after the drama with Tom's parents, I got a call from Grandma. Her voice, usually so cheery, sounded worried. Alice, sweetie, she started. I've heard about all this mess with your parents and Emily. Don't you think it's time to bury the hatchet? I sighed, feeling the weight of her expectations. Grandma, it's not that easy. They've really hurt me. I know, honey, but they're family. Surely there's a way to patch things up. I could hear the plea in her voice, and it tugged at my heartstrings. Grandma had always been there for me even when the rest of my family wasn't. I hated disappointing her. What do you think I should do? I asked, already dreading the answer. Why don't you try reaching out? Make a peace offering. Show them you're willing to mend fences. I closed my eyes, torn between my love for grandma and my need to protect myself. After a long moment, I sighed. Okay, grandma. I'll try. For you. That evening, I stood on my parents' doorstep, heart pounding. As soon as I stepped inside, I knew this wasn't going to go well. Emily was there, her face like thunder. So, she spat, you think you can just waltz in here and throw me a pity party? That's not what I, I started, but she cut me off. I don't need your handouts, Alice. Do you think that makes up for what you did? I should have had my party on your day then people would have actually shown up. I stared at her, shocked by the venom in her voice. Emily, I'm trying to make things right. Make things right, she screeched. You ruined everything. As usual, it's all about you. I looked to my parents, hoping for some support, but they just stood there, nodding along with Emily's tirade. She's right, Alice, Mom said. You've always been so selfish. I felt something snap inside me. Without a word, I turned and walked out, ignoring their calls behind me. I visited my grandma again. She greeted me with a hopeful smile. How did it go, dear? Instead of answering, I pulled out my phone. I recorded the conversation, grandma. I think you need to hear this. Her eyes widened in surprise, but she nodded. I hit play, and Emily's furious voice filled the room. As the recording played, I watched Grandma's face change from hope to shock, then to deep disappointment. When it finished, there was a long silence. Then, to my surprise, Grandma reached out and took my hand. Oh, Alice, she said, her voice thick with emotion. I'm so sorry. I had no idea it was this bad. I owe you an apology. I shouldn't have pushed you to reconcile. I felt tears prick my eyes. It's okay, Grandma. You didn't know. She shook her head. No, it's not okay. I should have believed you from the start. I just, 
I wanted so badly for our family to be whole. We sat in silence for a while, both processing what had happened. Finally, Grandma spoke again. Alice, dear, I want you to know something. Family isn't just about blood. It's about love, respect, and support. And from what I've seen and heard, Tom and his family give you that. Don't let anyone make you feel guilty for choosing your own happiness. The morning after my heart-to-heart -heart with Grandma, I woke up to my phone buzzing like crazy. It was a barrage of angry texts from my parents. My heart sank as I read them, realizing Grandma must have spilled the beans about the recording. How dare you record our private conversations? Mom's message screamed. You're nothing but a sneaky, ungrateful snitch. Dad's message wasn't any better. I can't believe you'd stoop so low as to secretly record us and then play it for your grandmother. You betrayed this family for the last time. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. Even when faced with proof of their own nasty behavior, they still found a way to make me the bad guy. This latest betrayal was the last straw. I was done with my toxic family. In the weeks that followed, I tried to focus on work and my life with Tom. But Emily, it seemed, had other plans. Her vindictiveness went into overdrive as she launched a full-on harassment campaign against me. It started with whispers at work. Colleagues would suddenly clam up when I walked into a room, only to start whispering again the moment I left. I soon found out Emily had been spreading nasty rumors about me, everything from calling me incompetent to telling outright lies about my personal life. Then came the anonymous messages on social media. Hateful comments popped up on my posts, each one nastier than the last. I couldn't prove it was Emily, but the tone and content left little doubt in my mind. But Emily's cruelty hit a new low when she tried to contact Tom. One evening, he came home looking troubled. Alice, I got a weird call today, he said. It was Emily. She tried to tell me you were cheating on me. I felt the blood drain from my face. What? Tom, you know that's not true. He quickly reassured me. Of course I know that. I shut her down right away. But Alice, this is getting out of hand. I nodded, feeling a mix of anger and exhaustion. I know. I just don't know how to make it stop. As it turned out, I didn't have to do anything. Emily's obsession with revenge started to bite her in the butt. Her work started to suffer as she spent more and more time plotting against me. Her colleagues noticed her weird behavior, the constant whispering, the long stretches spent on her phone instead of working. It wasn't long before her bosses took notice. I heard through the office grapevine that Emily had gotten an official warning for her declining performance. But even that didn't seem to stop her. Then, about a month into her harassment campaign, the news broke. Emily had been demoted. The irony wasn't lost on anyone, the very promotion she'd been so desperate to celebrate, the one that had kicked off this whole ugly mess, was now gone. After all the Emily drama died down, I threw myself into wedding planning, like it was my job. We finally picked this gorgeous outdoor spot, picture a fairy tale garden with this cute little gazebo where we'd say our I dose. As we stood there, imagining our big day, Tom gave my hand a squeeze. You happy? He asked softly. I looked up at him, feeling all warm and fuzzy inside. Happier than I've ever been, I replied, and I meant it. With the venue locked down, we moved on to picking our wedding squad. I asked my ride-or-die friends, the ones who'd stuck by me through all the craziness, to be my bridesmaids. They all said yes, which was awesome. Then came the invite list. I sat at our dining table, addressing envelopes to all the relatives and friends who'd had our backs during the past few crazy months. As I wrote each name, I felt this wave of gratitude for these people who'd shown me what real family was all about. But when I got to the bottom of my list, I paused. There were three names I hadn't written, Mom, Dad, and Emily. I stared at those blank spaces, feeling all kinds of emotions swirling inside me. Tom found me there, staring at the paper. You okay? He asked, putting a comforting hand on my shoulder. I looked up at him, tears in my eyes. I don't think I can invite them, Tom. After everything that's happened. 
He nodded, understanding. It's your call, Alice. Whatever you decide, I've got your back. I took a deep breath, then put down the pen. No, I said, my voice stronger than I expected. They don't deserve to be there. This day is about celebrating love and support, and that's not something they've shown me. As I said the words, I felt like this huge weight lifted off my shoulders. It was a bittersweet moment, realizing that cutting ties with my toxic family was the right move for my future. Yeah, there was sadness, but also this overwhelming sense of relief. The weeks flew by, and before I knew it, our wedding day was here. As I stood in front of the mirror in my bridal suite, fiddling with my veil, I was hit with this sense of peace I hadn't felt in years. As I walked down the aisle towards Tom, I saw the faces of those who'd stood by us. Tom's parents, beaming with pride, my grandma, dabbing at her eyes with a hanky, friends and relatives who'd chosen to support us despite all the family drama. These were my people, the ones who'd shown me what real love and support looked like. When I reached Tom, he took my hands in his, his eyes shining with love. As we said our vows, I felt this sense of rightness settle over me. This was where I belonged. At the reception, surrounded by laughter and joy, I had this big realization. My engagement party, all those months ago, wasn't just about celebrating our upcoming marriage. It was the first day of my new life, a life where I wasn't an outsider anymore, but the creator of my own happiness. As Tom and I swayed to our first dance as husband and wife, I rested my head on his shoulder, feeling truly at peace. The journey had been tough, yeah, but it had led me here, to a place of strength, wisdom, and genuine happiness. I love you, Tom whispered in my ear. I love you too, I replied, my heart full to bursting. In that moment, I knew that whatever life threw our way, we'd face it together. And for the first time in my life, I was excited about the future, not scared of it. This was my fresh start, and I was ready to dive in headfirst.